today is all around calculating fractions of amounts. Uh, so this is something that's new to us. It might be something that you've done a lot and you find relatively straightforward. It might be something that you've not really done a lot on or you've not had a lot, you need more practice in. And um, so today what we're going to do, we'll, we'll recap some of the questions you've sent in. Then we're going to build understanding of calculating fractions of amounts. Now everyone, your challenge is wherever you're up to, take that one next step as ever. Challenge yourself to get to that next step. For most children, that will be recapping on some of the skills that I'm going to show you and then having a go at task A. Um, for those children that you just feel and you know you're ready for that extra bit of challenge, and I don't think that'll be most children, I think that'll just be some, then what you're going to do is you're going to stay on the video and I'm going to talk you through a real challenge. Um, so whichever one you go for, I hope you get a lot out of it and I hope you find it really, really useful. And we begin today by going back and revisiting some of those examples that have come through. Loved them. The end of last week, we were looking at comparing fractions and then ranking them by difficult difficulty, which were easier, which were harder. I wanted to talk through this one to recap some of the strategies that we used. So one was looking where we can find a common denominator. So if the denominator is the same, the bottom part of the fraction, we can just compare the numerator. Now here, 5, 6 and 9 twelfths, they are not the same denominator, so it's harder to compare them. But if we make double five sixths, or double the denominator and the numerator, then we'll have a fraction in twelfths, an equivalent fraction in twelfths. So five sixths equals ten twelfths. This one is more. Uh, let me come over and have a look at this one. One strategy we went for was benchmark measures. How close to zero or how close to one? Um, now nine tenths is more than eight ninths. And why? Well, this is only one tenth away from one. Whereas eight ninths is a ninth away from one, and that's a larger gap. Um, so here, nine tenths is, is more. Um, and then we said, in other occasions, we might look at more or less than half. Um, but again, the, these two fractions, they're both more than half, and they're both less than half. So it might be then we need to find a common denominator. Now, I thought I would just look at this example and explain this one, partly because these are relatively difficult finding that common denominator. And also, just spot this pattern. 5 eighths, if we add 1 to the numerator and the denominator, 5 eighths becomes 6 ninths. Now that actually makes the fraction larger every time you add to a proper fraction. Every time you add 1 to the numerator and the denominator, the fraction gets larger. Have a look at this one. This is a similar example. 3 eighths or 2 sevenths. Well, this time I've subtracted 1 from the numerator and the denominator, so the fractions get smaller. Uh, and again, thank you, Joel, very helpfully for me, has provided answers as well. Um, now, have a look at this one. This one came through from Jamie. So thank you for this one, Jamie. Um, I wonder which strategies you'll use to compare the fractions, which you found easier and harder, and so on. So pause the video and have a go. And then when you're ready, let's have a little look. Now, I went for, well, this one has been the easiest because it's in twelfths, so I can just compare the numerator. So 7 twelfths is larger. Um, then for 6 thirteenths or, or 6 twelfths, that's an interesting one. I went for this. Well, thirteenths are smaller than twelfths. So thirteenths must be smaller, 6 twelfths must be larger. And also this is equivalent to a half. This one's less than half. Great question. I can see it in both ways. Using that halving strategy or, or the comparison to half, 19 fortieths, that's less than half. 8 over 14 is more than half, because uh, 7 over seven is half of 14 and 8 is more than that. Quite difficult, though, if you're trying to find a common denominator. Um, at, whereas this one, it's easy to find that common denominator, a bit like Joel's first example. 18 twentieths is 36 out of 40. So 18 twentieths is actually more. Um... Let's, let's move on to this one. There's one slightly different, different example here from Robbie. Uh, let's have a look at it. Uh, pause the video and have a go at these. Which is the larger fraction and rank them by difficulty? Okay, let's have a look. Um, now, I went for this one. 6 twelfths is half. 13 out of 24 is more than half. That must be larger. Like this fraction. Same numerator. But if we've got a larger denominator here, 5 eighths must be less because it's in eight parts, whereas five sixths must be more, only a sixth away from one. Um, again, we have a fraction here, four eighths, it's a half, and 11 twenty-fourths is less than half. Now, I like this one. This is an interesting one. Six fifths, well, that's more than one. Six sevenths, 
that's less than one, using one as a benchmark, but in a different way. Robbie, great example, and thanks as ever for, uh, for sending it through. Okay, today's video is called Make 32, and that's a task that some of you will get to where we're going to find fractions of amounts that make 32. But today is all about finding fractions of amounts, and we're going to try and build your understanding of that in little pieces. We'll look at some of the experiences that you might have had that build your understanding of that that you'll have done in the past. We'll extend that further. Uh, most children then will go off and do task A, um, having watched that ma the main part of the video. Some of you who maybe would do task C or the extend task um, or, or a task B, you might stay on the video and your main task is actually in the video as well. And it's really, really challenging. So only if you feel really confident at finding fractions of amounts, have a go at that. Now, everyone will have had a different level of experience of this. Some children might have not have even done this in year five. Some might have covered it in year five and in year six. And this is another time. So again, just challenge yourself in the right way for you. We might have started off by doing something like this, a third of 12, and you need to understand that that 12, and maybe you once had 12 objects, and you were splitting that into three equal groups. And a third of 12, that is four. Now notice, four times three, times by these three thirds, that equals 12. Um, and then we maybe move to using a bar model. So you didn't actually need the object to be able to do the calculations. So for a quarter of 20, you'd have needed to know how to do 20 divided by 4. And then the answer, of course, is 5. Um, we'd have moved from there, perhaps, to finding what we'd call fractions where they're not unit fractions, not with a 1. So well, let's say 3 quarters of 20. Um, and there, I've basically got to do the same calculation. But then I've got to know this other step. I then need to multiply by the numerator. How many quarters? Three quarters. One, two, three quarters. So the answer there, 15. Have a look at these examples and these bar models then. Uh, we've got mistake A, mistake B, and mistake C. In each case, what mistake has been made? Can you spot it? Can you see what the correct answer is? Pause the video and have a look at those ones. And when you're ready to press play, let's have a look. Uh, the first example, 3 quarters of 36. Well, these numbers aren't all the same size here. So 36 divided by 4 is 9. Um, and we've got 3 quarters, so 3 lots of that 9, 27. What about 2 thirds of 24? Well, 24 divided by 3 isn't actually 9. Um, it's 8. So 2 thirds, um, well, that will be 16. An 8 and another 8. Now, what about mistake C? Well, that seems okay. Um, 20 divided by 5 is 4, as we looked at before. The mistake there, well, 4 fifths have been marked on. It should be 3 fifths. So 3 fifths, that's 12. Now, I wonder if you can have a go answering these questions. Um, now, you might see the link between the questions as well. That's what I'm aiming for. Pause the video and have a think about these ones. And then when you're ready, let's have a look. So a quarter of 80, they're 20. Uh, 80 divided by 4, of course, there. So 84, a quarter of 84, well, I just need to also quarter that 4. So it will be 21. So three quarters of 84. Well, this is one quarter, 21. Two quarters would be 42. So three quarters, 63. A third of 150, 150 divided by 3, 50. Two thirds of 150, that'll be 100, two lots of 50. What about two thirds of 180? I imagine you did uh, one third is 60 and then double that, two thirds of 120 uh, there. Now, you might also notice that 150 to 180, that is 30 more. So I could just do two thirds of that extra 30. That would be an extra 20. I wonder if anyone saw that link. Have a look at this one. A quarter of a number equals another number. Um, so what could the numbers be? I wonder if you can come up with some different combinations that the answer could be here and see the link between them. So pause the video and have a think about that. And let's have a look. I wonder if anyone managed to guess the example that I happen to have given. So a quarter of something equals 15. I wonder if anyone guessed that one. So what would that whole amount be? Tell the screen if you don't know already, if you haven't already. Quarter of 
60 is 15. Now, do you see the relation between these numbers here? 15 and 4 lots of 15 equals 60. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. Two thirds of a number equals 14. Well, what must each third be? Each third must be 7, because look, 2 thirds is 14. So the whole amount there? Well, it's got to be 21. Now, this is the point where a lot of you will go off now and have a go at task A. Only those that feel really, really confident, hang on, because the last part of the video is a super, super challenge. So this is the task that you get by clicking on the blue link that's underneath the video. Um, now, for some of you, you'll start now doing task A, and that's the task that you'll do. And if you're less fluent with finding fractions of amounts, that's the right thing to do. Remember, some children will have had a lot less practice at doing this than others. And for others, they'll have done this before and they'll need another challenge. So it might be, again, that this is where I say uh, you don't need to watch the rest of the video. I say thank you for joining in. Enjoy these tasks. So calculate these fractions of amounts here. And then these questions here can be these two questions can be answered in different ways. So what could this be? And what could this be? It's challenging on this one. Um, now, uh, the answers for those are at the bottom. Now, for those that are going to go on to something slightly more challenging, you're going to go back and watch the video. Um, if at the end you want a real further challenge, if, you've, if we've not gone deep enough, then there is an extend task there. You're very welcome to have a go at that. I'd love to see expl your explanations on that. It is a real challenging one. The answers to all the questions are at the bottom there. So for some of you, Good luck with task A. I would love to see your work from that, your thinking that comes from that. Uh, and otherwise, click back on that video. Now, for everyone that's still with us now, this is your main task. It's a really challenging one. I'd be really interested how you get on with this. Um, so the numerator is 2. We don't know what the denominator is, and we don't know of what amount, but we do know it makes 32. So level 1 is you'll be able to find an answer. Level 2 you'll be able to find three different answers. There are lots of different possible answers to this question. Um, now, my suggestion is for most of you, have a look at the next picture that I'm gonna show you to give you a bit of a clue before we start off. But I know that there's some children who'll be up for having a go at this as it is. Now, this is really, really challenging. So I think the majority of people will want to go onto this next picture, see the first image or the first few images, maybe the first example, and then come up with their own other examples. But if you fancy having a go yourself from this point, pause the video. But this is your task. Good luck. So we're going to have a look at three different possible answers. OK, so have a look at this one to start off with. Um, so we know the two is so is represents 32. So these two sections of the bar model represents 32. Um, but we just don't know how many pieces this will extend into. I've covered up the whole bar model there. Um, but let me show you what it could be. Let's say it was two thirds. So the 32 is two thirds. Um, so then we'd have to think, well, what's the whole? Well, each piece would be 16 there. And so the whole would be three lots of 16. It'd be 48. OK, let's have another an, a look at another example. Example answer two. Let's say this time it's two quarters. 32 is two quarters. So what's that whole amount then? Well, each piece again is 16. Um, so it could be 64. Well, how about this? Two fifths. Well, two fifths of what number is 32? Well, I can see that those two parts are 32 again. So each part again must be 16. This time it is how many lots of 16? Five lots, 80. Two fifths of 80 equals 32. Of course, for one fifth of 80, I'll do 80 divided by five, that's 16. Um, and so then two fifths would be two lots of that 16. 